Hello and welcome to Career Education. Today we will be looking at resumes, which will be new for some of you and review for others of you. Some of you will be starting a resume from scratch and some of you will be uh, revising an existing resume. So for those of you that are new to resumes, a resume is basically a tool for getting a job where you highlight your qualities, skills and experiences with the goal of landing a job interview. It's a work in progress, basically a living document. So it's something that's constantly changing and being updated. And it's a great way to track your experiences and achievements. It's usually used to apply for a job, but can also be used to apply for volunteer opportunities, scholarships and bursaries. It can show you what you actually need to do in order to have things on your resume. Volunteer work, of course, counts. Uh, it's really important at the age you're at to really start to build a portfolio of items that you can highlight on a resume. So here are some possible subheadings you could put on a resume. Some of them are on every resume and some of them will depend on your experiences. Here's an example of a resume and this is a resume that's made in my blueprint which is a fabulous tool for building a resume because it takes a lot of the stress of formatting out of the formula for you. You can see all the different topics that are highlighted in black and the really consistent formatting throughout the whole resume. So let's take a look at some resume do's and don'ts so that you can have a really strong resume. So first of all, you have to keep your email professional. And if you don't have a professional email, you need to update your email to one that is. So these are not resume ready emails. All right. So if you have an email that isn't appropriate, then you need to make a new email account. Um, you need to choose a common non decorative font. Uh, keep it in a normal size range, ideally 12. Uh, this makes it easier for your resume to be read if it's faxed or scanned or photocopied. So these italicized fonts are not okay and a simple plain font like this is okay. You really, really need to be honest on your res resume because you give references and if it's found that anything on your resume is fake, then uh, it can immediately lose you the job. Um, within each section on a resume, you need to make sure you're putting your most recent items first. Um, you use dates to show when you did things, not just the vague one year. It can be month. It doesn't have to be the exact date. So you might have done something from September to December. Perhaps you were on the junior varsity volleyball team and maybe it ran from October to January. So dates when you did things can be by the month and the year, but never just a year. All right, so here's an example of some dates for extracurricular activities that could be put in a resume. You'll notice that if an activity is still being done, that it doesn't have an end date. Uh, it just says to present. So if you don't put an end date, then it defaults to uh, what you see here. All right. Uh, here are more examples of dates. So if you completed an emergency first aid course in July 2021, then that's how it would be entered. You want to use action words or verbs to describe your experiences or skills. And these are really brief, but words like the ones that you can see here on the screen are action verbs that help to describe what you're putting on your resume. Here's an example of someone in Key Club and what they might have done. Um, they volunteered, they made, they fundraised. Those are all action verbs. All right. It's really important that you take the time to make your resume perfect. All right. <laughs> it needs to be proofread by yourself and someone else. So let's take a look at some resume don'ts. First of all, you don't use paragraphs and complete sentences. You want to use bullets to highlight information. You don't handwrite your resume or handwrite corrections on it. You don't use personal pronouns on it because everything's bulleted and not full sentences. You don't need to use anything like that. Um, instead of saying, I developed a new product, you would just bullet developed a new product. All right. You never fake dates, job titles or work responsibilities. 
and you don't include certain personal information and this is interesting you don't include your gender religion nationality date of birth height and weight these are all items that are protected by the human rights code so you can't be discriminated against for any of these items and you don't include a picture again for the same reasons you want to be chosen based on your activities and your experiences not on what you look like all right so my blueprint has a really good tool in it called resume builder and it helps you to keep track of your experiences and achievements and allows you to build and share your resumes and cover letters too so you will find under work a tab called resumes and it's a great tool you can create one resume to start you can actually duplicate this resume to create multiple resumes for different purposes so if you're applying for summer jobs you'll actually be able to use the resume you create here. It takes the formatting stress away and it breaks down the writing process to make creating a resume as simple as possible. You even have the option to download, print, or email your resume. So after you've created your resume, you can actually download it as a Word document. And then if you want to get a little fancier with formatting, you are welcome to do that. And for the purpose of this course, you should include two references and uh, you've had a lesson on mentors and important people in your network. These are names that might be relevant to references. You always ask a person before you use them. You never use family members as they're biased and will only say nice things about you. If you work for a company that is a family business, perhaps there's someone else in the business that could be a reference for you and you need to include their name official title or relationship and their preferred contact information so here are a couple of examples someone might be a personal reference a soccer coach an owner of a business and you would include their contact information so let's watch a video tutorial from my blueprint that explains how to use the uh, resume builder tool Today we are learning about resume building. We are going to do this in the context of preparing you for a part-time job or a volunteer opportunity, but I think it's important to note that job opportunities while in high school are building skills that are highly applicable to post-secondary careers. Before going any further, I do want to give you a few instructions on how to manage using this video and completing some activities in your Education Planner account. This pause button will be used throughout this lesson. When you see the pause button during the lesson, you will pause this video and complete an activity in Education Planner. Our focus today will be on the Work tab, primarily the Resumes feature. Let's jump into it. So when I click on Work, you'll see that there are several features to explore. Yes, our focus today is to build a resume to set you up for a part-time job or a volunteer opportunity. Today you are going to write one resume, and you are going to write this resume with the intention to duplicate it whenever you apply for a job. You might be wondering, why can't I just have one resume? And that is a very good question. To answer this, I want you to picture an employer. Some receive hundreds of applications. What makes a resume stand out? is a resume that shows that research has been done about their company and that the applicant is willing to spend time customizing the resume to that particular job. So how do you duplicate the resume? Once you have one created, click on these three dots. It creates an exact copy that can be edited. Two more things that I want to point out to help you in this process is the resume guide to the right of my screen and the exemplar resumes below it. If you click on the guide, you will receive detailed instructions on writing a resume, and I highly encourage you to take a look. Under the resume guide are some exemplar resumes. I know you can find exemplar resumes elsewhere online, but it gets noisy with conflicting advice. Checking these out will match the formatting and content that we present to you with my blueprint. I'm going to let you get started with adding your contact information in education, as doing so is self-explanatory. Skip the objective, we will take a look at that together. To edit each section, just click on the pencil edit symbol. Please pause the video to add your contact information and your education information. 
Did you fill out your contact information and your education? Excellent. Now you're going to add an objective to your resume. As said earlier, you will be duplicating this resume. So we are going to make the objective statement quite general. To add an objective, click on the blue Add Objective box. But before writing, check out the Need Help tab. It encourages you to be concise and to the point. Just a sentence that briefly describes you and states what you are looking for. For example, if I'm searching for a part-time job and hoping to work with children, but I don't have an exact position to apply to just yet, I might write that I'm a hardworking student seeking a part-time position working with children. Later on, when I apply to a specific job, let's say as a camp counselor, I might say, I'm a hardworking student seeking a part-time position as a camp counselor. I wish to apply my creative thinking and energy into this dynamic opportunity. As you can see, I can build upon this as I find a specific position to apply to. Please pause the video to add your objective statement. I can't stress enough that it's okay not to have a lot, if any, work experience at this stage of your life. However, if you have held a job before, to add the work experience that you have, click on Add Work Experience. When you do this, make sure that you read the Need Help tab. Employers do pay attention to writing style and grammar, so write in the correct tense. It also reminds you to highlight the skills that you developed, which is super important. In a moment, I'm going to have you pause the video to add work experience. But if you are skipping this section because you haven't held a job as of yet, just keep watching through the pause. Please pause the video to add your work experience. Adding extracurriculars demonstrates that you're willing to get involved and that you have developed life skills in various contexts. Committees, clubs, sports, these all count. Extracurriculars can be activities that are done in school or even outside of school. I wouldn't go too far back. Try to keep your extracurriculars to what you are currently doing or have been involved in for the past year. If you have volunteer experience, definitely include it. Volunteering displays so many personal characteristics that employers are looking for, but make sure that you describe what skills you develop just like you already did in the work experience section. Before doing the skills section, I want you to write down your skills. Are you creative? Do you show leadership? If you're stuck, access these samples that my blueprint provides, but I highly encourage you to think about your personal qualities before accessing this. Once you've brainstormed your skills, add them to your resume. Try to limit yourself to three skills. Please pause the video to add your extracurricular activities, volunteer experience, and brainstorm your skills before adding them to your resume. Achievements. This is a great section if you are looking for your first job. Consider any awards you have received or special recognition that you have earned in the past couple of years. You don't have to add anything to this section, but if there is an accomplishment that you want an employer to know about, this is where you put it. Certifications. Along the same line as achievements, if you have any certifications, this is where you list them. Lifeguarding, CPR, SmartServe, WIMIS. These are examples of certifications. Hobbies and interests. It's okay for this section to be unrelated to the job. Employers want to know who they're hiring. This section is just a list and it doesn't need any description. Again, try to limit this to three hobbies and interests. Please pause the video to add any achievements and or certifications that you have. Also take the time to list some hobbies and interests. A reference should be someone that knows you quite well. If you've had a job before, it's a good idea to include a reference for your previous employer. A reference should not be a family member though. I know, I know, your family knows you very well, but they might be quite biased and a potential employer wants a fair assessment of your abilities. 
It is always good practice to talk to your references before adding them to your resume. It's more of a courtesy thing more than anything. It's also good practice to contact your references again if you've interviewed with an employer. Also a nice courtesy. They'll appreciate the heads up and as a bonus, they might brainstorm ahead of time your best qualities to be prepared for an employer's call. You can opt to include your references on a separate sheet of paper. This is common practice. Please pause the video if you have some contact information available for references. If not, take a moment to brainstorm who could be potential references and maybe even use this time to contact them. If you skip this step, don't forget to come back to it later. Congrats, you've created a resume. Now I wouldn't go as far as saying that you're done, as there are a few steps you can take to fine tune it. Let's start by previewing your resume. Click on Preview Resume, and this will give you an overall view of what you have just created. Looks pretty good, eh? However, you might be interested in changing the design. To do so, click on Change Design, and to the right, four designs will appear. Your resume's default is the basic design. What I like about the basic design is that you can download it in three different formats. A Word document, which you can then edit through Word if you desire. A PDF, which is nice if you are emailing your resume, as it can't be edited by anyone else. Or as a text file. A text file gets rid of the formatting, but I like this option if I am copying and pasting my resume into an online application as this guarantees that the content of my resume won't be scrambled. In saying this, check out the classic, clean, and traditional formats if you're not wanting to convert your resume into Word. I'm also going to stress the importance of having someone else proofread your resume. Having a fresh set of eyes is super important and there is a good chance that your proofreader will have a great suggestion or two. Once you've added your references, you're sure of the accuracy of your resume, you've done a spelling and grammar check, and you've had a proofreader, then your resume is ready to be exported into any of the available designs. Please pause this video to explore the different formatting options and complete a spell check. So to assess your resume, it's going to be a four point scale that you can take a look at here, and this will also be posted in your assignment. And remember, if you're not sure what any of these parts should look like within the My Blueprint Resume Builder, you have a guide and examples. So you can look at what the wording could be like, how you bullet, how you don't use full sentences, and so forth. All right, before completing it, read it over yourself. Have at least one classmate or other person read it over. It could be a parent or a guardian who might have some great ideas for you. If you can't access one of them, find someone else you trust and respect. Ask them if it's clear, ask them to look for spelling, punctuation, grammar errors, um, ask for suggestions of items you should add, remove, or change. All right, it's really important to add it to your portfolio so that your teacher can see your resume. So in the resume builder, you will choose preview resume, and then you'll add it to the portfolio so the teacher can see it. And you can also, if you wish, choose to export a copy to save um, and the basic and word choices give you resumes you can edit. All right, that's it. We'll see you next week.